Well, I'm Ron Douglas and I've recently retired from teaching optometrists at City University. By training I'm a biologist and by inclination I'm a vision scientist but not a vision scientist as optometrists would tend to think of it, but a vision scientist of all non-human animals. The area that I'm most interested in is deep sea fish and these are some of the handsome creatures you find down there. The aim of the talk was really to try and show a clinical audience that there are many ways of seeing, there are many facets of vision which humans don't have and secretly I think maybe to convince them that the eyes of other animals are more interesting and arguably better than humans. Now in the deep sea most light nonetheless comes from the sun, at least in the upper thousand meters. So animals that live in the upper thousand meters have tubular eyes. So they're like telescopes directed towards the surface. So here are three animals. This one, this eel-like animal, actually hangs vertically in the water column. We can miss a lot if we concentrate on specific subjects in humans. So I have never worked on humans directly. However, things I found out using deep sea fish, now having um, trials, clinical trials, interest from the military, and this is not the reason I do it. I do it because of an interest in vision in the animals. But all sorts of things fall out of it. And we would miss a lot if we only try to answer specific questions in humans. Colour is a very, very important sexual signal. So for that reason, most fish and birds are not trichromatic. They actually have four visual pigments, giving them arguably best, better colour vision than us. So these are the visual pigments of a goldfish. And you can see it has one peaking red, green, blue, and also one over here, which I'll come back to, peaking in the ultraviolet. However, even fish and birds are complete amateurs at colour vision when it comes to this guy, the mantid shrimp. The mantid shrimp has 13 different colour channels, giving it infinitely better colour vision, most likely, than you could possibly imagine. There are lots of ultraviolet signals out there. We can't see them, but the animals can. So, for instance, flowers often have UV reflective patches on them. This is how we see the flower. This is with a camera that's sensitive to UV. And the, the petals, UV reflective. The center, UV absorbing. So while the flower looks uniform to us, to a UV sensitive insect, the center will be very clearly visible. There are two deep sea fish, totally different, but they both have unique forms of vision. One is one that has an eye that is made of two parts, one part for looking up, one part for looking down. And the part for looking up, rather like the human eye, focuses light using a lens and it focuses onto retina. But light from below is focused not by a lens but with a mirror. So you have one eye that looks in two different directions. One part of the eye uses a lens the other parts of the eye use is a mirror to focus the light. There's this deep sea ostracod called Gigantocypris, and you can see that it has these huge parabolic miller, mirrors behind its retina, and it uses those mirrors to focus the light. Same sort of principle as a radio telescope. One I worked on quite a long time ago now is known as a dragonfish, and it is interesting because it sees, well, it does have visual pigments like humans and other animals, but it also has chlorophyll in its retina. And this chlorophyll it gets from bacteria, and it's actually the chlorophyll that absorbs the light, not the visual pigments. Um, but the visual pigments are indirectly activated by the chlorophyll. No other animal is known to have that sort of vision. Actually, to give him his full name, I think he's the stoplight loose jaw dragonfish. But his real name is Malacostius niger, and that's maybe what I'll use. Now he's interesting, and that's his eye here, because he has two light organs, so-called photophores, one below the eye and one behind the eye. 
Now, the one behind the eye is rather boring. It emits blue bioluminescence, just like all other bioluminescence. But the really interesting one is this guy below the eye, because he emits red light. So he's emitting red light, but I've just said that all visual pigments are blue. So what's he doing emitting red light that nobody can see? Well, it seems kind of unlikely. Most deep sea fish, as I say, have visual pigments sensitive at around about 480, so they will see the blue bioluminescence, but they will not see the red bioluminescence. So what's going on? Can this dragonfish just not see his own bioluminescence? Of course not. Malacostis is different to other deep sea fish for two reasons. First of all, he has two visual pigments and they're red shifted compared to those of other deep sea fish. So there, and that's Malacostius. But even they're not that red sensitive and they're really not more, so they're not sensitive enough to see its own bioluminescence. But it turns out that this guy in his retina has another substance, this. And this is something that absorbs lots and lots of red light. It's clearly not a visual pigment, so what the hell is it? And I hummed and hard for years about what this might be. Turns out it's chlorophyll. It has chlorophyll in its eye, which it gets from its diet. And we now know that this chlorophyll acts as a photosensitizer. So what that means is the red bioluminescence is absorbed by the chlorophyll, and that indirectly stimulates this visual pigment. So you have this fascinating picture of the dragonfish cruising the deep ocean, emitting this red light that nobody else can see. So a little bit of thought will tell you why. Life in nature, um, and I, you, only you can know about yourselves, but life in nature is about two things, food and sex. Nothing else matters. So for no good reason at all, let's take sex first. Say you're in the deep sea and you fancy a bit of nookie. So here's two um, dragonfish and they want to get it on for nefarious purposes. If they use blue light, you know, flashing blue light, hey, big boy, I'm over here. <laughs> Maybe you're right. You might attract a member of the opposite sex, but of course everybody else can see you, so you're probably going to get eaten as well. However, use your red light, nobody knows you're there. Teenagers dream as much sex as you like, and nobody need know you're at it. I, I suppose one way you could say you've got to kiss a lot of frogs to find your prince. So we were just really looking through all these deep sea animals, how do they see? The answer was boring, boring, boring. And suddenly we find an animal that does it completely differently. Um, and it's like a lot of science, there's an awful lot of drudgery until you get your eureka moment. So the question arises, if, well, to me anyway, if UV is so useful to many animals, why is it that we don't see UV? Why don't humans see UV? Because actually, if you look at our visual pigments, especially the blue cone, it absorbs tons of light in the UV. And actually, all our visual pigments do absorb light in the UV. And of course, the reason we don't is because we have this shortwave absorbing lens. Of course, if you take the lens out, then humans do become UV sensitive if you don't put in a UV absorbing prosthetic. But of course, let's go beyond that and say, well, well, why do they have a lens that cuts out the UV? And there are two probable reasons that you will all know. Um, if you're a long-lived animal, like we hopefully are, um, lifetime exposure to high UV levels, really not very good for the retina. It makes the retina fall apart. And the other thing about UV is it gives you really, really lousy images. And that's because of two reasons. First of all, UV is much more prone to small particle scatter than other wavelengths. And also, shorter wavelengths are more prone, prone to chromatic aberration. So if you want high acuity vision, then you really don't want UV to get to your retina. Are land mammals boring? Um, 
Golly, that's a, that's a, <laughs> no, I, I'd better say no. Um, to me, they're less interesting than fish. But that's, that's pure bias. Visually, they're really no more boring. Um, I mean, fish are interesting and, say, birds can be interesting. For instance, they have huge ranges of accommodation. Some can accommodate by 60, 70 diopters, you know. Humans, they're the best mammalian accommodators. 10, 12, my age, none. Um, they have moderate color vision based on three visual pigments. Mantid shrimps have complex color vision based on 13 pigments. Does that make them more interesting? To me, it does. Um, so actually, yes, I'll, I'll rephrase my answer. Land mammals are more boring than fish. 